All right, everybody, welcome in to Sports and Money. Many of y'all know myself. I've got an entire panel of experts on board with us tonight. One of them is a Patriots fan. One of us is a Commanders fan. One of us is a Vikings fan. We've got a Falcons fan. And one of us still has Christmas lights hanging outside. So we're going to let these guys introduce themselves. We are loaded with topics all over the place. We are going to cover NFL football. We're going to cover other random sports. We're going to cover other completely non-associated random things. So thank you, all of you, for being with us tonight. We hope you enjoy the show. It will be fast-paced. We will try to keep it moving. It will not be slow. We're not going to take a long time to talk about stuff. But first of all, um, I'm going to introduce these guys in the order in which they committed to doing this show. And so I'm going to start right off the top. Shane, man, tell everybody about yourself. Shane, I am the far northerner of the group, uh, the Patriot fan. Uh, Happy to have Mac Jones out of my roster. So. (laughs) <laughs> oh, shots fired right away, man. I love it. <laughs> All right, next up is uh, Corey, man. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, my name is Corey. Um, I'm a Falcons fan, so there's some heartbreak between me and Shane there. Um, I understand that um, we got Kirk Cousins, so I'm kind of glad we got him on the roster. Um, we'll see how it plays out, though. You got the coach and the quarterback, so, hey, you got a chance in that hey. division. Yes. All right, next sure. up, Austin, man. Tell everybody about yourself. Uh, my name is Austin. Uh, I am sorely missing Kirk Cousins right now as a Vikings fan, but okay. I'm hoping you can enjoy him down in Atlanta, Corey. Um, you can find I mean, me over at uh, Tree Takes, too, by the way. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, Robertson. How about it? Uh, I am, yeah, I'm, my name is Robertson. I am, uh, Ben's co-host on uh, a podcast that we do together. Odds on favorites. I've uh, been doing it for almost uh, been doing it for over a year now, probably about a year and a half. So, um, just excited to work on with Ben on another project. All right. Thank you all, all four of you for being with us tonight. And I um, really appreciate it. Just a quick show fodder here. Um, tonight's our first episode of this show. Maybe a little awkward. That's okay. Just rest with us. We'll be getting better and better as each week goes on. We'll work on it. Let's hit some topics, or is everybody ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, let's do it. So, first one, Chicago Bears. They've got, of course, the number one pick in the draft. They've also got another early round pick. We're going to focus on fields and the number one pick. If you were the Bears GM, what would you want to do? Shane, take it away. I think we've all hit on a. I mean, quarterback is the number one spot in the NFL right now. If it's me right now with where the Bears are, it doesn't look like anybody's really jumping at it. I would select my quarterback of the future, Caleb Williams, with the first pick. I would keep my number one pick from before on the roster and continue with my draft and wait a little bit in the NFL. A quarterback is bound to get injured, and when teams come shopping – I've got talent on my roster ready to go. Corey, take it away. If I was the Bears GM, I think I would keep Justin Fields simply for the fact that I think he might have just enough toughness to get the job done. You know, Chicago is already tough to play in. When Justin Fields has over 50 yards rushing, they end up winning football games. So he has the ability to get them to a winning capacity. Uh, The defense was top 12 last year. They got DJ Moore. He had like 1,300 yards. He did pretty good for them last year. He has more weapons. I would say keep Justin Fields and then draft Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. Try and get him the best offensive weapon available and then just see what happens. I feel like Justin Fields, especially with a lot of coaching changes, I think he still needs a little bit more help around him. Austin, what do you got? Listen, I'm I'm keeping Fields when there's no good offers on the board like there are right now, but – when draft day comes and you see three quarterbacks go off the board in the top five, and then someone else comes up and grabs, uh, you know, a fourth one in the top 10, there's going to be a team hit the panic button that's saying, I couldn't make a trade up that expensive, but I'll, I'll happily take Justin Fields for a, a, a much cheaper price. And I'm trying to make a draft day trade if I'm the Falcons GM or the Bears GM. Robertson, last. Yeah, I, I'm keeping Justin Fields, and I'm still taking Caleb Williams number one if I can't get a the Godfather offer for number one. Um, uh, kind of li- like uh, Shane alluded to, uh, you can't have too many quarterbacks uh, with all these injuries and stuff. 
And Caleb Williams, you know, if he were to get injured, like if they just insert him in and have Justin Fields be the backup initially, I mean, he's running around the Bears offensive line still needs a little bit of work. So, I mean, it's more likely than not that multiple quarterbacks going to end up taking snaps. What better one than to have a guy that has experience in the system and that knows the offense. So I would just keep him if you can't get more than like a comp third. Even then, I'd still mm-hmm. probably debate keeping him. Um because then if if you insert him in the starting lineup and he plays well, you can trade him at the trade trade deadline. Boom, man. Y'all are killing it. All four of y'all basically said keep fields unless you've got a great offer. So that surprises me. And um, furthermore, man, are so quick. I didn't even use the timer. So congratulations, man. <laughs> are, they're awesome. All right, second topic for the night. I'm going to give y'all four quarterbacks, and y'all pick one, and I'll, I'll give y'all the criteria. So between Dak Prescott, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy and Jalen Hurts. If only one could ever win a Super Bowl, who's the most likely? And I don't mean this as a slight, but winning Super Bowls is hard, especially when you've got a stacked AFC and you've got guys like Mahomes grabbing more than their fair share. So it's yeah. not unusual that a guy has a good career and never gets to a Super Bowl, much less win it. So out of these four people, Prescott, Love, Purdy, and Hurts, if you could only pick one who ever got the Super Bowl, who would it be? Shane. See, I went with Jordan Love on this. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Packers, but mm-hmm. he's got some supreme talent. Uh, the Packers, when they had, you know, another certain quarterback that was leading the team, they never drafted offense. They've kind of changed that. looks like yeah. they're going to try to get him some weapons. And if you look at the other quarterbacks on that list, each team, you know, has some issues. You know, uh, Jalen Hurts, he loses his center. Um, a lot of defense is retiring. They do get Saquon Barkley. I think that's going to help that offense become more rush centric and help him again. But I, I think Jordan Love's got the talent and the weapons. Uh, the Brock Purdy and the Dak Pascott, I mean, they've made it, but it's been hard for them to be able to push that team over the edge. And both of them have had solid defenses. So, all right, Corey, what's your vote, man? That's a tough one, guys. Actually, as it was going, I was kind of going back and forth. I said the Cowboys only because I said Cowboys and Dak Prescott because they have a good defense. They have Michael Parsons. They got Diggs. They got Bland. I feel like they have a good enough de- defense to compete. Um, They did lose Tony Pollard in the offseason recently. But I feel like Dak Prescott has been putting up MVP-like numbers the entire, but maybe last two, three years or so. Of course, it's a team game. So it came down for me. Dak and Purdy, but I think Dak Prescott can provide a little bit more production. So I went Dak Prescott in the long run. Um, they had a top five defense this year. I, I have a hard time going against Michael Parsons in that defense. They they did pretty decent otherwise. Um, Dan Quinn, former Falcons head coach, he did pretty well with that team. Um, I'm gonna go with Dak on this. Love it. Two guys, two votes. So Austin, what you got? I'm gonna keep. The train going, we're going to go with a third different option here. I'm taking Brock Purdy. Now, if this question is saying that they're all on the same team, I'm probably not going Brock Purdy, although I do love me some Brock, but uh, that 49ers team, I I trust the coach specifically. I trust the coach there in in Kyle Shanahan more than I trust the rest of the coaches. So uh, I think Purdy has already been there. He's only one of two out of these four that have already been there. So I think he's the most likely to get back. And, you know, most likely – if you're most likely to get back, that means you're likely to win in my eyes. I think I know where Robertson's going with this. But, Robertson, it's your turn. And what are you landing on? Yeah, I'm, I'm picking Jordan Love here. Um, I, I, I was debating on picking Brock Purdy or not, but I'm thinking, like, we've seen – Dak Prescott have a fantastic team. We've seen Brock Purdy have a fantastic team. Jalen Hurts have a fantastic team around them. And they've been able to get there with a couple of couple of those guys that have been able to get there, but they haven't been able to win it. And like you think you look back at those teams, that Eagle team, you look back at the this 49ers team that just lost the Super Bowl this year. How much better can they possibly get? Like given the salary cap constraints. Jordan Love, yeah. we haven't seen a fantastic Packers team. And he took that team this past year, which it wasn't a bad team. But he took that team to the playoffs this year, granted a weak NFC. But to me, and out of all these guys, I think Jordan Love has the highest ceiling out of all of them. Yeah. Uh, Prescott, yeah. Purdy, Hurts, they all have limitations. We don't know what limitations Jordan Love has yet because he hasn't played it enough. Um, so I think he has the high, highest ceiling, and we haven't seen a really good Packers team yet that he's leading. 
All right. I, and, and I would have picked Hurts before all of this conversation. He's the only guy that y'all didn't pick. I just really like Jalen Hurts. And again, that probably won't be this year because they're losing a lot right now this year. So they're going to have to kind of redo some things. But I, I like Jalen Hurts. We'll see what his chances are. All right. Very good. That's an excellent case. I think you can make a case for all four quarterbacks. Let's move on now. During most shows, we're going to do the first three questions, first three topics on NFL only. This week, I switched to NFL, and we're segueing into a third that's sports-related. So Johnny Manziel came out last week, I think it was, and made some kind of a statement, basically the defect of that he really wasn't going to be a part of most of the Heisman celebrations, part of the Heisman ceremonies, until Reggie Bush gets his uh, Heisman trophy back. That may not or may not ever happen, but logistics aside, how would you feel emotionally if Reggie Bush did get his Heisman Trophy back? Shane. I mean, anyone that got a chance to see him play in college knows that he was a Heisman Trophy winner, like the best player, not even close for the years that he played, uh, especially in the NIL world that we're living in now. I mean, what he got in trouble for, everyone is doing right now and the money that Reggie Bush would have made now he might have never went to the NFL he would have made so many <laughs> so many dollars I mean houses on houses and if Johnny Manziel who didn't care about the rules says that this man that also got caught gets a chance you know like I said I Reggie is a all-time college football player uh so even if they don't give him the little trophy, everyone knows that Reggie Bush was the man when he was in college at USC. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, uh, Corey, what you got? I, Shane, you're totally right, man. Listen, Reggie Bush made football seem so graceful. He made it seem like seamless. He was like the way he was flying to the end zone, it would look crazy. Like the stuff he was doing at USC, he made Matt Liner seem like a Hall of Fame type of quarterback. <laughs> and Matt Liner was not that great of a, you know, but – because Reggie Bush was that decoy, he was that splash. He did special teams, punt return, kick return. I mean, it was just graceful the way Reggie Bush would just play the game of football. And to add to, like you said, Johnny Manziel, Johnny football, Johnny football was going absolutely, as the kids say, he was going ham in college. I mean, he did, he beat Alabama, but I'm talking about off the field, he was wilding, mm. so to speak. So for him to stand up and say, hey, this is a conversation we had about Reggie Bush getting the stuff back, Definitely, I agree. And especially in the days of the NIL, I recently saw, I don't know if the, it was a kid from Florida, but the guy bought his mom a house. I don't know if he even played a college game yet. So in the days of the NIL, like, I feel like if they're doing it now, let him read the benefits, all the benefits of his illustrious career. And I think he should get his ASAP. I think he should get that ASAP. I think so. Austin, you can tell where I'm leaning as well, but it's okay for somebody to disagree. Do you agree or do you have a different take on it? Um, this one is kind of tough for me, Ben, you and I actually had a conversation and Robertson as well about like the MLB hall of fame not too long ago. And mm -hmm. this kind of is, is in a similar bucket of like, yes, it was illegal. No, he wasn't the only person that was doing it, but he was the most famous and he's the one who got caught and he mm -hmm. had an example made out of him. And I, I think that, you know, looking back on it now with NIL, it seems like such an insignificant thing, but it's kind of hard to go back and reverse something like that. And his Heisman year was like the first year I really got into college football as a kid. And it was, it's something special to me and has like that kind of sentimental value. Um, so I, I would love to see him get a Heisman back, but I think, I don't know if it's what's best. Robertson. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't really pay much attention to college football, Ben, you know this, um, but to, Given the state of things now, I mean, to me, there's no reason to keep it away from him. Like, I don't know why they're so headstrong about, you know, not giving it to him or or, or giving it back to him or whatever. I mean, just I mean, he earned it. I mean, it's not like he didn't earn it like just every other player did. Like what happened off the field had nothing to do with what he did on the field. So, I mean, he wasn't cheating or anything like I mean, sure, like we, we've heard all the stories about all these college players and all that before NIL. We've heard them all. What's the difference with this one, you know? And now that the NIL is instated, who cares? You know, it's I don't know why they're kind of headstrong about this. In case y'all can't tell, I've been dying to use this sign. It's Ida Levante. It means irrelevant. It means I don't care. So anytime the guys really don't care about a question that I picked for the show, they get basically one chance to say, hey, screw you, I don't care. So I just stuck it up there because I've been dying to use it. All right, 
So everybody's pretty much on board. I, emotionally, I would be 100% fine. I'd love to see Reggie Bush get it back. We all know it's kind of like canceled championships and, and banners being pulled down. It still happened. We all saw it. So why not just go ahead and recognize it, even though I get it logistically? It may not ever happen. All right, let's switch gears again. The women's NCAA tournament is coming up, and I think there are more storylines for people than there ever have been for, for mm-hmm. women's college basketball, and, and I have somewhat kept up with it over the years. But we're not going to spend long here, but who would you like to see win the women's NCAA tournament this year? Shane? I'll go for two on this, Ben. So who I would like to see is uh, let's go and go with the Caitlin Clark. Let's see if <laughs> Iowa, if she by herself could literally pull that team. Who do I think is going to win? Uh, that's you and Corey's uh, home state. That's going to be South Carolina. That team is you know what, buddy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the the fight against LSU has brought even more attention. Um, mm-hmm. Don Staley is an out-of-this-world coach, and what she's been able to build out of that program, um, yeah. international talent, and the fact that you know some of these ladies are going to sit out that first-round game and they're still going to be a 40-point favorite it is – is true. I mean, Caitlin Clark is the one that the the vast majority are going to turn into and, and what she's brought to Iowa, but I, I think South Carolina will win, but I'd rather see some uh, some upstart be able to pull something out. Mm-hmm. Corey? I'm with you, Shane, once again. I'm kind of like you in that way because it's like the long shot, literally the long shot. Caitlin Clark can pull from the logo like no one's <laughs> business. Like Caitlin Clark pulls like Steph Curry. She pulls like Dame Time. Like the and she just beat uh Pistol Pete's record um for most points all time, which I stood for like what fifty some years. So it would be like a true David and Goliath if Caitlin Clark can will her team to the tournament championship. But like you said, however, USC and Don Staley, Don Staley's like the Nick Saban of what she does. Like it's a well oiled machine. Those girls are gonna be ready, those women are gonna be ready to play and obviously bust heads if they have to. Like, you know, I think South Carolina's Definitely the team to win. LSU has a chip on their shoulder. I think they could still, you know, get scrappy. But with you, USC, they're just too good, man. They're too good. But I would love to see Caitlin Clark cook. I would love to see that. Austin? Well, listen, I got to go for my hometown team, who I get to go watch play at home all the time, the NC State Wolfpack. Mm. It's hey. pretty. It's a pretty good team, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I've yep. I've got to watch them in person several times. They've got quite a mm-hmm. few good players. Uh, my favorite one on the team, uh, Sanaya Rivers, is actually I believe a transfer from South Carolina. Uh, she was there her freshman I, I year. I, that does mm-hmm. sound familiar. Yes, and uh, she's transferred over the last couple of years, and and she is a freak athlete on the basketball court and a ton of fun to watch. Robertson. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of agreeing with Shane here again. This is like, th- I think the third time <laughs> in the show. Um, I'm going with Iowa here. I mean, just the, I think it's more so, I'm looking at a different angle. It's just the scope of things, right? Caitlin Clark's been the most popular women's basketball player for the past, what, two years now, like rivaling Angel Reese. And I think it would just do so much for the sport. It's kind of like the, the the narrative here. If she was able to pull that off to take a team that's not favored to, to win it all and to pull that championship. Like, I think it would just add so much to, to the game. It would just yeah. be, I think it would be that much more successful. It's going to be even better for the WNBA when she goes pro. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's, it's a no lose situation here for, for the NCAA with, you know, if mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark's able to pull that out. True. Love all the choices. NC state is a legit team. They're, they're way under the radar to be honest, but they're a legit team. Mm-hmm. The team I'm going for you know, the hometown team, South Carolina Gamecocks. I am a avid Dawn Staley fan. Listen, before Staley showed up, nobody outside the state cared about women's South Carolina Gamecock mm-hmm. basketball. And I mean nobody. You talk about true. a complete lack of any kind of national recognition and really a lack of success for the most part. But when Dawn Staley showed up, yes, I think it was right in the middle of their dynasty, and she's one of the one of the people who was able to step up to their level. Before UConn came down, she was able to step yes. up. So I absolutely love her. I would really love to see her. If they can't, I want to see the other USC all the way across the country, the USC Trojans sure. with Juju oh, Watkins. Okay. Yes. Love yes. Juju. She's in petition. She's got the potential to possibly put on some of the greatest women's NCAA yes. performances we've ever seen. She's just yes. got that kind of potential. 
He does. So those are the two that I want to see. But the women's NCAA tournament this year, if you and I, and listen, not everybody can follow all the sports. I get it. We we we're busy. We're we got tons of things to do. But those of you in the audience, if you get a chance, check out the women's tournament. The most important question of the night. Let's move on to that. Fast food, what we all love. I love to eat. I like them all. I don't think there is a bad fast food restaurant, but tonight we're going to pick out your favorite. So, Shane, I'm interested to see a little bit up and down the East Coast if it varies at all. But, Shane, what's your favorite? If you want to give an honorable mention to, but what's your what's your absolute favorite now? See, I feel like I get left out on this because uh, upstate New York, we are not catching the same quality food that everybody else is. So, um, I'll say, though, Fast food, uh, for me, if I have a craving, that's actually Arby's is the one I'm going with. I know it's kind of out there uh, for the for the main run, but if I have a chance, that's one of the ones I'm going for. Like I said, now I, I I'm missing out on every anything in the South that's you know an option for everybody else, but you know, I, I, and fast food's not in my normal go to, but I'll take a roast beef sandwich, you know, if it's gonna throw my way for Arby's. So that's my number one choice. Corey. It's like that meme. It's like, who's keeping Arby's in business? It's Shane's keeping <laughs> Arby's in business. It's me. It's me. It's me um, and my friends. That's it. We're the only ones. Just keeping them on hey, that list. Hey, don't sleep on the uh, the mozzarella sticks, though. Arby's got a decent, you know, they got a decent little something, something. Um, But for me, I'm a sucker for some Zaxby's, man. Like, I'll take a Wings and Things, and I, man, I, I've been eating Wings and Things for like 15 years, it seemed like. Like, that was just like always my go-to. You get the five. Got the five traditional bone bone in wings, three tenders, fries, the Texas toast, the drink. You're gonna be full. You can split it with someone else. Got the ketchup for the fries. Got the several different, many different kinds of sauces you could use. For me, it's gonna be the wings and things with a nice cold sprite. That's I gotta stay away from that because that's my weakness. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Good tonight, baby. Take yeah. You, <laughs> right. Austin. I mean, this is the easiest question you could have possibly asked. It's uh, obviously Whataburger is the only correct answer here. Mm. Hey. I, I miss it dearly. I, where I used to live back down in Florida, it was my absolute go-to. I haven't had it in a long time since I moved yeah. up here. Anytime I go home to visit family, that's like the one place where I'm stopping. I'm getting a sweet and spicy bacon burger, and then I'm going back either late at night or in the morning and getting a honey butter chicken biscuit. Mm. I'm not gonna lie, Water Burger. There was one in Texas. Those biscuits are really good, though. Honey butter chicken mm. chicken biscuits yeah, has was- saved me many a nights after a, a night on the town. Yeah, those are good. Robertson. I'm I'm kind of jealous, Austin. That sounds really good. We don't have those up here, so I mean that 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 sounds really good. Um, for me, I'm going Chick Fil A. Uh, I know it's mm. probably it's probably pretty basic, <laughs> but like. I, I love the, the chicken sandwich, man. Like that's that's just that's the go to for me. And the waffle fries, like they're not the best fries, but you know what? There, there's just something about them, right? Like you don't know what it is. There's just something about them. But I will do an honorable mention here. Like if you're on a road trip or something, and you just you're just a little hungry, like you just stop at McDonald's to get some fries, man. Like that, like you anywhere. It's it's the same thing no matter where you go. Like just some McDonald's fries, like that's the best thing. At, that a fast food place can serve, in my opinion, is those McDonald's fries. Can't get enough of them. Yeah, so for me, it's McDonald's. I mean, we're a McDonald's family. When I got I got three kids, I mean, we, you know, we're at McDonald's as often as we can, get the Happy Meals. The value menu really helps us out a lot at McDonald's. Yes. Um, really big deal. Burger King's not bad on that, but McDonald's is great. And then my dad was a McDonald's guy, so, you know, got the tradition there. He would not go to work before he went through that McDonald's drive through He just would <laughs> every yes. single morning. Rest in peace, but he would not do it. And don't spill his coffee during the day either because it's going to be a bad day if you do, man. <laughs> so that, Jason, that Jason Kelsey yes. game plan right there. Stop every morning and yes. get a little McDonald's coffee <laughs> and a soda. Hey, that's an Ocho Cinco, man. <laughs> oh, yes. Ocho. Yes. Yes. Ocho only ate McDonald's. <laughs> Bill Clinton, man. Bill Clinton. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. All right. So – we that's all of our sports takes for the night unless one of these guys got one but what we're going to do on most episodes and this is the first episode that we're doing it we're going to give each guy 30 to 60 seconds for each person it won't always be guys each person 30 to 60 seconds at the end of the show to talk about whatever they want to talk about so i have no clue what they're going to say 
if they piss you off, I'm sorry. You'll just have to get over it or don't come back next week. But anyway, you can say anything you want to say. It can be funny. It can be serious. It can be a shout out to, you know, your high school. It can be a shout out to a birthday, an anniversary. I don't care. The floor is yours. Shane, take it away. Uh, first of all, shout out to everybody on the show. Uh, thanks for getting everybody together, Ben. I appreciate it. Um, for me, uh, this is the greatest time of year. You got uh, St. Patrick's Day coming up. Yes. Uh, hmm. NCAA, both men's and women's. Uh, I, I'm right now at a conference about 15 minutes away from Jimmer Fredette's hometown. So, you know, they're re- everyone Jimmy in this Bucky. area is ready for basketball to go off. Um, I love this time of year. Uh, a little downtime for the, a lot of the other sports. You get to watch some college sports. Uh, and I just love March Madness. So uh, that that would certainly be my shout out. Uh, and, I, man, I got to move south. I mean, I don't have these choices. Like, I'm not getting a biscuit late night. I, I, I'm going to have to hang out with Austin. We're, we're going to make a yeah. trip south and get some food. <laughs> All right, Absolutely. Corey. Um, there's one thing I noticed. So we was at dance class. And um, so shout out to the dance the dance troupe. Uh, Miss Carrie, the dance mm-hmm. teacher, was talking about how the moose is preyed upon by the orca whale. And I just, it just blew my mind. So like in Canada and Alaska, when the moose go out to the coast, a moose can dive 20 feet deep. I had no clue. I was oblivious. Wow. A moose can dive 20 feet deep. And then once they get down there, like this orca whales nearby, Free Willy gets hungry and they will eat a moose. And I'm like, a, a moose is massive. So her question was, what is a predator of the moose? And I was like, okay, wolves, bears, coyotes, of course. But she said the biggest, and it is the orca whale. The orca whale will eat a moose. I thought that was just, it just blew my mind, man. I was like, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. I looked up on, you know, I looked up videos, all kinds of stuff. Like, I need to see a whale eating a moose. I need to see it. So if y'all get a chance, go check it out. It's kind of crazy, but a moose is who, they're huge animals, man. That's just crazy. I've never heard of that before. It's awesome. And, and again, that's a little bit of a brain warp to think of a water animal or a water creature uh, uh, being predator on a major land creature. I had no clue. All right, Austin. All right. It's time for a quick movie review with Austin. I want to talk about yes. the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life, Madam Web. I Yo. only saw it. <laughs> I heard it was bad. I went and saw it the day it released. Oh, I'm so Big sorry, Big mistake. Man. Yeah. You know. Were you the was... only one in the theater? No, no, there was. There was... <laughs> and, you know, well, I, I watched Spider-Man it before fans, the match. You know, it, but I heard it was bad. Man. I, I watched it before I'd heard it was that bad. So I didn't know what to expect going into it. I was expecting a halfway decent movie. And then the whole villain, the whole time, it's it's all ADR dialogue. It's it's like his mouth moves and then the, the audio comes out half a second later. It's horrible. The acting is probably the one thing that's decent in the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's not that good. The screenplay is terrible. The cinematography is pretty bad. The dialogue looks like sounds like it was written by ai it doesn't oh, it's not man. how humans talk Dang. it's just overall 1.2 out of 10 mm. wow oh, i heard awful. it was bad man i heard it was bad oh. all right shout Robert. out the casting director the only person who actually did something useful she you know put, you know. yeah i didn't mean you know. oh yeah 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 for sure yeah. Don't go see that movie or go see it and confirm Robertson. It's probably not even out anymore. So um, yeah. <laughs> Austin, Austin kind of stole my thunder here a little bit. I'm also doing a review here, but it's of a show that came out recently on Netflix. Um, some of you guys, maybe even none of you guys have heard of the show before. Avatar, The Last Airbender. Um, yes. it, was a, it was a cartoon show on Nickelodeon. Um, I did not watch it growing up, but I watched it later. I've watched it within the past couple of years because I heard like all the rave about it. I'm like, okay, let's let's give it a try. Loved it, right? So I naturally got excited when the Netflix release was coming out. Mm. It, it's it's mad at best. Okay. So I mean the, yeah. the cart the, the, the they did the first season of like the cartoon. It was mm-hmm. like I think the the first season was like 20, 24 episodes. Yeah. Netflix crammed it into eight. It felt yeah, extremely see. rushed. The casting yeah. was like hit and miss, like completely hit yeah. and miss. And then like they got the costumes right. They got the effects right. But then like some things it's like, man, that's just 
that's just not yeah. it and there's a huge split on it online i'm kind of stuck in the middle it's like it wasn't terrible but it wasn't great either so yeah. i'm 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 excited to see what they do from here but i'm not like very optimistic like i was before it's was, it was just kind of meh yeah i heard that too i heard that too like avatar it deserve it might deserve a little bit better than what they was able to give but then that's a it's hard to top the show it really is like i feel like they've been trying to Maybe a few times now. It's hard to talk. All right, real quick. I said at the outset that one of us was a Patriots fan. Who was that? Shane. That's, Shane. That's me. Shane, upstate New York, all the way close to Montreal. One of us is a Commanders fan. Who is that? Robertson. Me. Robertson in the Maryland Panhandle. One of us is a Vikings fan. Where is he? Austin. All right, Austin. And then, Corey, for the audience, you are what kind of a fan? I'm a Falcons fan, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty bird. And I still have. <laughs> hey, you got a coach and a quarterback now, so we'll see. Hey, I still yeah. have a string of Christmas lights hanging outside of one of my trees. I've gotten all the rest of them down. I just need to get that one last one down. It takes a ladder, and I have to climb on the roof, so that's why I don't have Hey, if that's you know, how you know you're in the South. <laughs> you're not wrong, man. <laughs> yeah, we put it's Christmas lights on many anything. ways that you know that you're in the South. <laughs> yeah. We put them Christmas lights on the back of a porch and call it a pa- call it a little party and call it a night, man, for real. All right, all of you watching, thank you so much. We will tell you about lots of other things in the weeks ahead. We will be doing lots of different things. The show will not always be the same. We are going to make it different from one week to the next, but this is our foundation for how we're going to start. So thank you all for being with us. Have a great one. Good night.